We're back at VeeamON 2022. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with my co-host, David Nicholson. We've got another mass boy coming on. Patrick Osborne is the vice president of the storage business unit at HPE. Good to see you again, my friend. It's been a yeah, long time. Yeah, it's been way too long. Thank you very much. I for can't having. even remember the last time we saw each other. It might have been in our studios in, yeah. uh, in the East Coast. But, um, well, it's good to be here with you. Lots been going on. Of course, we've been following from afar, but give us the update. What's new with HPE? We've done some stuff on, on GreenLake. We've covered that pretty extensively, and it uh, looks like you got some momentum there. Yeah, quite a bit of momentum both on the, uh, on the technology front and certainly the customer acquisition front. The message is certainly resonating with our customers. So GreenLake is, you know, that's the transformation that's fueling the future of Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And uh, so the momentum is great. On the technology side, we, we're at, you know, well over 50 services that we're providing on the GreenLake platform. You know, everything from solutions and workloads to compute, networking, and storage. So it's been really fantastic to see you know, the, um, the platform and being able to really delight the customers. And then, you know, the momentum on the sales and the customer acquisition side, the customers are voting with their dollars, right? So they're very happy with the platform, certainly from an operational perspective and a financial consumption perspective. And so, you know, our, our target goal, which we've said, you know, a bunch of times is we want to have that, we want to be the hyperscaler on-prem, right? We want to provide that, that customer experience to, our, to, to the folks that are investing in the platform. It's going really well. Well, ask you a question. Um, as a, as a, you know, as a former analyst, you can be obnoxious and so forth. So I'll be obnoxious for a minute. I wrote a piece in 2010 called "At Your Storage Service," saying the future of of storage and infrastructure is as a service. Blah blah blah. Do you feel like now? Of course, you you don't want to over rotate when there's no market. There was no market for GreenLake in 2010. Do you feel like your timing was like right on? A little bit late a little bit early. I, I, looking back now, how do, you, how do you feel about that? Well, it's funny you say that on the timing side, we've seen iterations of this stops and start forever. That's true. Right? So I, Financial you know, I, gimmicks. Yeah, I started my career at, you know, at Sun Microsystems, right? We talked about you know, the big freaking web tone switch and you know, a lot of you know, the network is the computer. You saw storage networks. You know, you've seen a, lot, a ton of yeah. iterations in this, you know, in this category. And so I think the timing's right right now. Obviously, you know, the folks in the hyperscaler class have proved out that this is something that's working. I think for us, the big thing that's really resonating with the customers is they want the, the operational model and they want the consumption model that they're getting from the as-a-service experience, but they still are going to run a number of their workloads on-prem, and that's like the best place to do it for them economically, and we've proved that out. So I think the time is here to have that sort of bifurcated experience from an operational and financial perspective. Um, and in the past, the technology wasn't there and the, uh, the ability to deliver that for the customers in a manner that was you know, useful wasn't there. So I think the timing's perfect right now to provide them. As you know, theCUBE has had a presence at HPE Discover, mm -hmm. previous, even HP Discover, um, and, and the same with Veeam, uh, but, but we got a long history with HP slash HPE. When Hewlett Packard split into two companies, we made the observation, wow, this opens up a whole new ecosystem opportunity for you know, HPE generally, and storage business specifically, especially in data protection and backup. And the Veeam relationship, like it, it, the ink wasn't dry, and all of a sudden you guys were partnering, throwing joint you know, activities, and, and so talk about how that relationship has evolved. Yeah, so uh, from, from my perspective, uh, we've always been a big partnering company, both on the, the route to market side, so our distributors and partners, and we work with them, and you know, big channel business. And then on the software partnership side, that's always evolving and growing. So we're, you know, we're a very open ecosystem, and we like to provide choice for our customers. And I think at the end of the day, you know, we've, got, we've got a lot of things that we work on jointly, so we have a great value prop first phase of that relationship was you know, partnering. We've got a full boat of product integrations that we do for customers. The second was a lot of uh, special sauce that we do for our customers for co-integration and, and, and co-development. Uh, we just did, we had a huge session today with, uh, with Rick uh, Vanover and, and Federico on, on our team here to talk about ransomware, right? So, you know, we have 
big customers suffering from this, this plague right now. And we've done a lot together on the engineering side to provide you know, a very, very well engineered, well thought out process to help avoid some of these things. And so that, you know, that wave two of how do we do a, a ton of co-innovation together to really delight our customers and help them run their businesses. And I think the evolution of where we're going now, we have a lot of things that are very similar strategically uh, in terms of we all talk about data services and outcomes for our customers. So at the end of the day, when we think about GreenLake, right, so like our virtual machine backup as a service or disaster recovery, it's all about what workloads are you running? What are the most important ones? What do you need? How, what, you know, where do you need help protecting that data? And essentially, how can we provide that uh, that outcome to you? And you pay it as an outcome, right? And so we have a lot of things that we're working on together in that space. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at that. Yeah. So, so well, so first of all, I'm from California, so I'm having a really hard time understanding what either of you were saying. Your accents are. We so could talk th in Boston. Your, your <laughs> accents are so yeah. thick. I, I can barely. Yeah. But I, but I, I, I know. I, I heard you say something about Veeam at one point. Um, take a closer look at that. W what does that look like um, from a ransomware perspective in terms of this concept of, of air gapping or mm. immutable, immutable volumes? And, and just as an aside, it seems like Veeam is a perfect partnership for you since customers obviously are going to be in hybrid mode for a long time and Veeam overlays that nicely. But, but yep. what does it look like specifically? Immutable, air gap, some of the, some of the things we've been hearing a lot about. Yeah, so uh, for us, I mean, we, so I'm exec sponsor for a number of big HPE customers, and I'll give you an example. One, one of our customers, um, they do, they have their own cloud service for time management, and essentially they, you know, they're exploited and they're not able to provide their service, right? It, you know, it has a huge ripple effect. If you think about on an inability to do their service and then how that affects their customers and their customers' employees and, you know, all that, it just, it's a, it's a, it's a disaster. Not, to, you know, no, no pun intended. Um, and the thing is, when we learn from that and we can put together really good architectures and best practices, so we're talking today about three, two, one, one, right? So having three copies of your data, two different types of media, having, um, you know, an offline copy, uh, an offsite copy and an offline copy, right? And so now we're th thinking about all the things you need to do to, um, to mitigate against all the different ways that people are gonna exploit you, right? And it, we've seen it all. You, you, know, you have uh, keys that are erased, uh, primary storage that is compromised and encrypted, uh, they, people that come in and delete your backup catalog, they delete your backups, they delete your snapshots, right? So they get it down to essentially, I'm either going to you know, have one set of data, it's encrypted, and I'm going to make you pay for it, right? And 40% of the time they pay and they get the data back. 60% of the time they pay and they get maybe some of the data back, right? But for the most part, you're not getting your data back, right? So the best thing that we can do for our customers is to come with a, you know, a very prescriptive set of T-shirt configuration sizes, standardization, right? Best practices on how they can take this entire uh, ecosystem together and make it really easy for the customers to implement. But it's, you know, I wouldn't say it's never bulletproof, but essentially do as much as you can to avoid having to pay that ransomware. So three, two, one, one. Three copies, meaning local. Yeah. Okay, so you can do fast recovery if you need to. Two different types of media. So tape fits in here, not necessarily Absolutely. flash and spinning yeah. disc. Could it be tape? Yeah, a lot of times we have customers that have almost you know, they have four different types, right? So they're running their production on flash, right? So we, you know, have our Electras with you know HPE networking and servers running, you know, specific workloads, high performance. We have you know secondary storage on prem for fast, you know, recovery. And then we have some form of offsite and offline, right? Offsite could be object storage in the cloud, right? Uh, and then offline would be an actual like tape backup. The tape is out of the tape library in a vault, right? So you can, no one can actually physically access it, you know, through the network. And so you, it's a physical copy that's offline. So you always have something to restore. Patrick, where's the momentum today, specifically to the, to where Veeam on, with regard to the Veeam partnership, is it, you know, security and ransomware, which is kind of a, a, a new thing for this world, the last two years has really come to the top. Is it cloud migration? Is it data services and data management? Where's the momentum, all of the above? But maybe you could help us parse that. Yeah, so what we're seeing here at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, especially through GreenLake, is just an overall um, focus on data services. So what we're doing is, we've got great platforms. We always had, HPE is known as an engineering company. Like we have you know, fantastic products and solutions that customers love. Um, what we're doing right now is taking uh, essentially a lot of the, the 
the beauty of those products and elevating them into an operational experience in the cloud, right? So you have a set of platforms that you want to run, you know, have mission critical platform, business critical, secondary storage, archival, data analytics, right? And I want to be able to manage those uh, from the cloud. So fleet management, HCI management, pro protocol management, block service, you know, what have you. And then I want a set of abstracted data services that are on top of it, and that's essentially um, you know, things like disaster recovery, backup, uh, data immutability, uh, you know, data vision, understanding like what kind of data you have. And so we'll be able to pr provide those services that are you know, essentially abstracted from the platforms themselves that run across multiple types of platforms. We can charge them on outcome-based, right? They're, you know, they're based on consumption, so you think about something like DR, right? We, you, know, they, you, you have a small set of VMs that you want to protect with a very tight RPO, you can pay for those 100 VMs that you know, are the most important that you have. So for us, driving that operational experience and then the cloud data service experience into GreenLake gives customers a really, you know, gives them a cloud experience. So have you heard the term super cloud? Yeah. <laughs> have you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this, it's a term that we, we kind of coined, but I want to ask you about it specifically in terms of how it fits into your strategy. So the idea is, and you kind of just described it, I think, whether your data is on-prem, it's, it's in the cloud, multiple clouds, mm -hmm. we'll talk about the edge later, but you're hiding the underlying complexities of the cloud's APIs and primitives. You're taking care of that for your customers, irrespective of physical location. It's the common experience across all those platforms. Is that, is that a reasonable vision, maybe even from a technical standpoint? Is it part of HPE's strategy? Uh, and what does it take to actually do that? Because it, it sounds nice, but it's probably pretty intense. Yeah, so the proof's in the pudding for us. We have, we have a number of uh, platforms that are providing, whether it's compute or networking or storage, uh, running those workloads that, you know, they plumb up into the cloud, they have an operational experience in the cloud, and they, now they have data services that are running in the cloud for us in GreenLake. So it's a reality, right? We have a number of platforms that support that. We're going to have a, you know, a set of big announcements coming up at HPE Discover, right? So we led with Electra and we have a block service. We have VM backup as a service and, and DR on top of that. So that's something that we're providing today. GreenLake has over, I think it's actually over 60 services right now that we're providing, you know, in, in the GreenLake platform itself, right? Everything from security, single sign-on, you know, customer IDs, everything. So it's, 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 it's real. We have the proof point for So, and GreenLake is essentially, I, I've said, it's, it's the HPE cloud. Is that a fair statement? 100%. I mean, kind of redefining cloud. And one of the hallmarks of cloud is ecosystem. Okay, so roughly, and I want to talk more about sort of, you got to grow that ecosystem to be successful in cloud, no question about it. And HPE's got the chops to do that. What percent of those services are HPE versus ecosystem partners, and how do you see that evolving over time? So we have a good number of services that are based on, you know, HPE, or, you know, our tried and true. They got good tech. Proper. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So number of that, and then um, we do have, we have partners in GreenLake today, right? We have a, a pretty big, you know, ecosystem, and it's evolving too, right? So we have customers and partners that are focused, they, you know, the, our customers want our focus on data services. We have a number of opportunities and partnerships around data analytics, right? As you know, that's a, you know, it's a really dynamic space, right? A lot of folks providing support on open source, you know, analytics, and that's a fast moving ecosystem, so we want to support that. Uh, we've seen a lot of interest in security, right? So, um, you know, being able to bring in security companies that are focused on data security, right? Uh, data analytics that understand, like, you know, what's in your data from a customer perspective, how to secure that. So we have a, you know, a pretty big ecosystem there, and, um, you know, just like our past at HPE, we've always you know, had a really strong partnership with tons of software companies, and we're going to continue to do that with GreenLake. You guys have been partner friendly. I'll give you that. I, I'm going to ask Antonio this at Discover in a, yeah. in a couple of weeks, but I want to ask, ask you, when, when you think about, again, to go back to AWS is the sort of prototypical cloud, you look at like a Snowflake and a Redshift, right? The Redshift guys probably hate Snowflake, but the EC2 guys love them, sell a lot of compute. Now you as a business unit manager, right? do you ever see the day where you're side by side one of your competitors? I know, I, I'm guessing Antonio would say absolutely. Culturally, 
how does that play inside of HPE? I'm sort of testing your partner friendliness, and, right. and how would you, how, yeah. do you, how do you think about that? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, for us, we have, uh, you know, the opportunity for us is to delight our customers, right? So we've always talked about customer choice and how to, you know, provide that, that best outcome. I think the big thing for us is that, um, you know, from a cost perspective, you know, we've seen a lot of customers, you know, coming back to HPE uh, repatriation, you know, from, a, re, uh, from a, a repatriation perspective for a certain class of workloads, right? So, you know, we, are, from, from my perspective, we are running, we're providing the best infrastructure and the best operational services at the best price at scale for these customers. Really? You're yeah. seeing, okay, so I think that was a, you, you definitely, culturally, HPE has to, I think you would agree, yeah. has to open up. You might not, you're going to go compete based on the merits Absolutely. of your right. product yeah. and technology. The repatriation thing is interesting, because I've kind of always been a repatriation skeptic. Are you actually mm. starting to see that in a meaningful way? Do you think you'll see it in the, in the macro numbers? Um, I mean, cloud doesn't seem to be slowing down, the public cloud growth, I mean, they're, I don't know, they're, they're you know, whatever, 35, 40% a year. Yeah, so, so I, uh, we're, we're seeing it in our numbers, we're seeing it in the, the logo, the new logo and existing uh, customer acquisition within GreenLake, right? So it's, it's real for us. And, and, what, and they're telling you pure, pure cost. cost, it's that, that simple. Cost. So they get the cloud bill, we do too, it, you know, get the, the email from my CFO, why the cloud bill so high this yeah. month, right? Part of that is it's consumption based and it's not predictable. Yeah, and also too, like one of the things that you said around, you know, unlocking a lot of um, uh, the customer's ability from a from a resourcing perspective, right? So if we can take care of all the stuff underneath, right, the under cloud for the customer, the platform, so the storage, the serving, the ne the, the networking, the automation, the provisioning, the health, right? You know, you, as you guys know, we've you know we have, you know hundreds of thousands of customers on the on the Aruba platform you know we've got uh, you know we've got hundreds of thousands of customers calling home through InfoSight, right? So we can provide a very rich set of analytics, automated environment, automated health checking, and a very good experience that's going to help them move away from managing boxes, right, to doing, you know, operational services with GreenLake. Yeah, we talk about repatriation often. Uh, there was a time when I think a lot of us would have agreed that no one who was born in the cloud will ever do anything other than grow in the cloud. Um, are you seeing organizations that were born in the cloud realizing, hey, we know what our 80% steady state is, and we've modeled this. Why rent it when we can own it? Or why rent it here when we can have it as operational cost there? Are, are you seeing those? We're seeing some of that. Uh, we're certainly seeing, you know, folks that have, uh, you know, they're a big part of their native or their digital business, right? Um, it's, you know, it's a cost factor. And so I think one of the other areas too that, you know, we're seeing is um, there's a big transformation going on for our partners as well too uh, on the sell through side, right? So uh, you're starting to see more niche uh, SaaS offerings. You're starting to see more vertically focused uh, offerings from uh, our service provider partners, our MSPs. So it's not just like, you know, in either or type of situation. You're starting to see now some really, really specific things going on in either verticals, customer segmentation, you know, specific SaaS or data services. And for us, it's a really good ecosystem because we work with our SP partners, our MSP partners. They use our tech, they use our services. They provide services to our joint customers. You know, for example, I know you guys have talked to iLand here in the yeah. past, right? It's a great example for us, for customers that are looking for DR as a service, uh, backup as a service, hosting. So it's a nice triangle for us to be able to please those customers. Yeah, they're coming on to, uh, tomorrow, the yeah. now 11, 11 I think you're right on. The, the one, I think, obvious place where this repatriation could happen, it's the Sarah Wong and Martin Casado scenario, where a SaaS company's cost of goods sold become dominated by cloud costs. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, well, maybe I'm not going to build my own data centers, that's probably not going to happen, but I can go to Equinix, right, and do a colo, and I'm going to save a ton of dough, kind of managing my own infrastructure with automation or you know, outsourcing it. So, Patrick, got to go. I could talk for you forever, you know, with you forever. Thank you so much for coming back in the cube. Always a pleasure. Go. Go Celts. Yeah. Uh, how you feeling about the, uh, we always talk sports here in, in Vimont. How you feeling? <laughs> My about original the call today was Celtics in six, but you know, we'll see what happens. You, you like, Steven, you like Celtics? Celtics six, yeah. even though tonight they got a little. Still believe, you got to believe. 
All right, I believe. Yeah, it'll be better than, you know, the Miami's uh, Mickey Mouse run there in the bubble. A lot of asterisks <laughs> attached to that, so, you know. I love it. Yeah. You got to believe here on the cube. All right, keep it right. I don't care. Keep it right there. Yeah, you don't care, because you're you from a sports town. Where, where are you in California? Uh, we have no, we have no yeah, sports. It. All right, keep it right there. This is the Cube's coverage of Beam On 2022. Dave Vellante for Dave Nicholson. We'll be right back.